Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, in this video, we are going to talk about Kubernetes architecture on a high level. So if you do not know, uh, I have started a new series where we will be going through everything related to AWS EKS. And I think this is the first video where we will understand the Kubernetes architecture on a high level. So as you might have watched many tutorials on uh, Kubernetes architecture, so Kubernetes goes uh, in, in two different, uh, has a two different components on a high level. One is master, the other one is the nodes, right? So why do we require this master and node component, right? So basically, as you might know, Kubernetes is an orchestrator to, you know, provide uh, help to the containers that are going to run on the Kubernetes cluster. So master is the one who is going to control the nodes. So what components exactly will help the master to control the nodes and how it exactly deploys the pods. So we are going to learn that. So as, as I told you, uh, there are two components. One is master. In master itself, we have multiple components. So First, let me list down what are the components that are present in the master and what are the components that are in the present in the nodes. Okay. Firstly, in the master, we have something called as container runtime. So this container runtime is present uh, in the master as well as the node. Okay. So container runtime is present in both master and the nodes. Now, the second component that is present is HCD. So we will talk about this in detail. What are these components and what is the requirement of this in detail in the same video. Next third component is cube scheduler. Okay. Scheduler is required for scheduling the pods, right? Next fourth component is API server, which is very, very important. We will talk about what is API server and what is the use of it in, uh, in a uh, in the same video. Next, we have controller manager. So why do we require this controller manager? As the name itself says, it is managing something and it is controlling something. Let's wait and see what it is doing. Then the next one is cloud controller manager. So why we are talking about cloud controller manager? Because this is not a Kubernetes video of that we are going to deal with in this playlist. We are going to specifically target about using AKS or uh, sorry EKS right so EKS means elastic Kubernetes service offered by AWS it is a managed service basically we will talk about that next as I told you in the nodes we have CRI container runtime the second component is kubelet why do we require kubelet we will talk about it the third one is kube proxy what is the use of proxy and why do we need it we will talk about that now, firstly, let's target and understand what are the components that are present in master nodes and why do we require them. So now we will pick one of this uh, one one by one and understand in depth why we require these components. Okay, first let's understand API server. So as the name itself says, it is an API. It acts as a front end for Kubernetes control plane and it exposes the Kubernetes API. Kubernetes APIs are required to interact with Kubernetes. So that's why it exposes the Kubernetes API. And it has got tools like Kubelet, uh, Kubectl. Um, sorry, it is not Kubelet, it is Kubectl. Uh, we, we will be using that to interact with Kubernetes, right? So kubectl, uh, create pods, kubectl, create nodes and things like that. We will use day in, day out. So these are the components that are embedded in the Kube API service. Okay. And uh, we users and every even the master components like scheduler, controller manager, etc. and worker node components like kubelet everything will talk with your api server so api server is like india gate so where you know uh, all the communication happens um, through the api server next we have hcd okay so what is this hcd hcd is a highly available key value store or a key value database so it is used for kubernetes backing store for all the cluster data so it will store all the master and the worker node information. When I say what is, uh, when I say it stores all the master and the node information, it will have everything inside that. For example, what is the no name of the master node? What is the name of the worker node? And where it is presenter? What is the IP address of it? Everything it will record and it will keep it in the HCD 
database and if there is any update so or, or, or the api server ask the hcd server to update it and it the hcd server will update the uh, details that are present in the database okay now if that is clear we will talk about cube scheduler which is very important in in the kubernetes architecture so cube scheduler is responsible for distributing the containers so when i say distributing containers it distributes the containers across multiple nodes and it the main responsibility is that it will watch for newly created pods with no assigned node and select a node for them to run for example let's say uh, you have created five pods okay five pods are getting created and you only have two nodes okay here there are already 10 pods running and here there are five pods running so what this scheduler does is it will analyze if this node can occupy these five pods or not it will does the same thing for the second uh, second node as well and if that succeeds if this pod or this node is okay to handle five more pods what it will do it will go ahead and uh, actually uh, distribute the containers across the multiple nodes okay so if that is clear let's go ahead and check the next uh, things that are there and we will try to understand what are the cube controller manager and also about the cloud controller manager so firstly we will take about controller manager okay so what are controller managers so controllers are responsible for noticing and responding when for example nodes containers or endpoint goes down so let's say we have two nodes in the architecture okay two or three nodes for example due to some reason this node is affected or this nodes got uh, disturbed and it went down it got shut down so now we only have two nodes so will the two nodes be sufficient to handle all the requests that is dependent right so what this controller manager will do is it will notice all these things and it will be re responding to the containers nodes and endpoints so they will also take decision whether to bring up that uh, new pod new run sorry new node and run a, a new container in such cases or not so here uh, the third node is down so it will take a decision whether to create a new one or what to do it will take the uh, entire responsibility of that so when I say controller manager, it is like a, a high level overview, but there are different different controllers. For example, there is a node controller which monitors the nodes, whether um, it will notice if the nodes are, nodes are responding well or not. If it node goes down, it will take care of that. And like that, we also have replication controller. What is replication controller? So it is responsible for maintaining the correct number of pods for every replication controller object in the system. Okay. So next we have endpoint controller. So endpoint controller is like it populates endpoint object that is joins services and uh, joins services and, and the pods. It is responsible for that. It will take care of that. Next, we have service account and token controller. So for example, it creates a default accounts and API access for the new namespaces and things like that. So these are all the responsibility of the um, you know, uh, service account controller. Okay, now let's talk about the cloud controller manager, right? So that is going to be the last component of your master node. So what is this cloud controller manager? What, what, why do we need that? So usually remember this, Cloud controller manager is not present if you are deploying your Kubernetes on your on-prem. So if you are deploying this cloud controller manager will not be there in the on-prem scenarios. Why? So this Kubernetes control component. So this is a special component that embeds cloud specific control logic. For example, in our case, we are going to use AWS, right? So it will contain logics related to EKS right elastic kubernetes service it will only run controllers that are specific to your cloud provider in uh, azure scenario it is aks azure kubernetes service in gcp it is uh, gke google uh, kubernetes engine right so in the same way if you are running this uh, kubernetes cluster on the on premise environment this component will not be there okay i hope that is clear to you 
as we are talking about eks this component is required for us so that is why we are mentioning it in this video next we have node controllers so what is this node controllers so this are required for checking the cloud provider to determine if a node has been deleted in the cloud after it stops responding or not so that is the use case of node controller node controller manager that we uh, talked in the previous that is different and this is specific to cloud okay next we have route controller so this is required for setting up routes in the underlying cloud infrastructure and we also have service controller so service controller it is required for creating updating and deleting cloud provider load balancers so this is very important because in this video we are going to talk about or in this playlist we are going to talk about eks so service controller is definitely required for in order to work with the load balancers in the aws okay so uh, i think this is clear to you when it comes to the master architecture so we also have uh, you know uh, you know the node architecture that needs to be discussed so we'll do that now so so now let's talk about node architecture as i told you in nodes we have three components one is container runtime second one is you you can uh, let me know what that is kubelet right so the third one is kube proxy so these are the components that are present in the nodes now let's talk about container runtime cri what is this cri so cri is the underlying software where we run all these kubernetes components right so it is the underlying software which will coordinate with us in running all the kubernetes components we are using docker but we have other runtime options like rocket container d etc so most of the time we will be using something called as docker uh, we already know what is docker right next let's talk about uh, kubelet which is very important kubelet is an agent that runs on every node in the cluster so what is this agent responsible for this agent is responsible for making sure that containers are running in a pod containers are running in a pod on a particular node so this kubelet will run on all the nodes that you create make sure, making sure that so what it will do is it will make sure that containers are running within the pod and on the node itself so if there is any issues this kubelet will know next kube proxy which is very important when you are having communication between different different pods so this is the network proxy that runs on each node in your cluster so what it will do it will maintain network rules as i told you it will maintain network rules on the nodes in short to make it clear to you these network rules allow network communication to your pods from network session inside or outside the cluster for example we have we will take this as a node inside that we have a pod okay here we are having a pod or sorry container that is running so what this proxy will do is it will enable your container or your pod to communicate with this cluster and with the node and also if if required outside of the node also right so this is very important at the end of the day we are deploying something on a pod on a node but that needs to be accessed by someone right so if that needs to work kube proxy plays a very important role in this architecture i hope that is clear to you so if that is all i had for this video i wanted to cover the kubernetes architecture on a high level and how it works next if this is clear to what we will do is in the next video we will try to you know and compare the kubernetes architecture with the aks or sorry eks architecture and see what are the things are happening right so um, that's all i had for this video if you're liking the content that i'm creating please consider subscribing and share it with your friends thank you and i will see you in the next one